Alright guys, Pliff here. Welcome back and today we are going to talk about the wonders of undervolting. <laughs> when you feel your PC is slow, the most usual path is to upgrade. But unlike desktops, laptops are kind of limiting because most of the components are built in on the board. Another thing is heat. A fast processor produces heat. A faster processor produces more heat. To prevent damage to the system, modern CPUs has a way of slowing down if it detects too much heat. This is called CPU throttle. However, you end up owning a system much slower than what you paid for. On desktops, you'll fix this by having a better cooling system or a new case for a better airflow. But for laptops, you can't do this. But today is your lucky day. If you own a laptop, there are a few things you may explore. Number one, overclocking. Overclocking is the practice of increasing the clock rate of a computer to exceed the one certified by the manufacturer. If you have a 3 GHz processor, you may boost it up to 4 GHz. However, faster clock speeds mean more voltage is being drawn and eventually, giving the system more heat than usual. It sometimes gives unexpected results and may damage your system or make it unstable. I only recommend this to desktop users who has a very good cooling system and a good airflow and also for advanced users only. Number 2. Repasting and Cleanup it is the process of disassembling your computer, getting rid of the accumulated dust, and applying new thermal paste to the heat sink to make it cooler and more efficient. I only recommend this if you are confident enough to open your laptop. And also, this is for advanced users. Number 3. Under Volting The original voltage set by the manufacturer to feed your CPU does not always correspond to what it actually needs. In heavy workloads, it will most of the time assume that the CPU needs more power which in most cases means more voltage than needed. More voltage means more heat which eventually make your CPU throttle down to undesirable speeds. Undervolting is the process through which voltage to computer processors and components is decreased dynamically on runtime. This process is very safe and I recommend it even if you are a beginner. In this video, I will walk you through all the process of undervolting. But before that, we will first establish a baseline for comparison. We will talk about the tools that I use, the problems you might encounter in undervolting, and the best practices I usually take in maintaining the system. Let's do this!
have a very solid proof that there's actually a very big difference in performance benefit when you undervolt. Having a very slow unplugged laptop score of 599 run in 8 minutes, a plug-in score at 1470 in 4 minutes, and finally to 1804 Cinebench score done in 2 minutes. I also did the benchmark without running any apps in the background. It gave me the score of 2048 in almost 2 minutes. I still got the 8th run. But as you can see, I got beaten by desktop CPUs which were possibly overclocked and properly cooled. If you have problems running XTU, just remember XTU is for Intel processors. I use a cool app called CPU-Z to give me a good amount of details of my CPU. If you want, you can also download it for free. Unfortunately, Intel only started undervolting on the 4th gen of their CPUs. To know what generation your CPU is, just Google search the name of the CPU from CPU-Z. And if you can't install XTU, you can install Throttle Stop. If you have AMD CPUs, you can use MSI Afterburner or Wattman. For Ryzen CPUs, you can try Ryzen Master. If everything fails, you can always check the BIOS or the board's manual for undervolting options. And lastly, if you have the 10th generation of Intel CPUs. Keep your surroundings clean. If you like gaming, buy a cooling pad. Don't overclock or repaste if you don't really need it. And lastly, I want to be honest with you, undervolting has been exploited by hackers to break the SGX security features in modern Intel CPUs. So, is undervolting still safe? Yes. If you don't use SGX, which is disabled by default, you really have no problem. And we still have to keep in mind that we should be cautious, always cautious, when visiting dubious websites and install a proper virus scanner or internet security utility for your protection. Let me know in the comments if you need help in undervolting, if you already did undervolting, or if this video helped you, or maybe share your Cinebench score. And don't forget to hit like and also please do subscribe, I beg of you. <laughs> It will really help the channel a lot. And thank you guys. It took me a while to make this video and I really hope you liked it. And as always, see you on the next one. Bye.